So I'll show you how to create um, a curtain which um, can move along a curtain rail um, similar to one in real life. So um, of course first we're going to need to create um, the main curtain. Um, I'm just going to use a basic polyplane for this. Let me just rotate this. And that's not as rotated. Let me add some more divisions to this. Just obviously the more the more divisions, the more um, calculations that can be processed to give you a more um, like more detailed kind of curtain. Um, next thing you're gonna want to do is turn this into an end cloth material. So just click end cloth. Then this one here, which applies, gives um, given a selected um, mesh and turns it into an end cloth. So now if you go back to frame one and click play, you can see you know it's now it's now it's now dynamic. And so now um, obviously we don't want it to fall down. We want this to become like a curtain. And um, so to do this. Um, of course, this. Of course, you know, if you're going to model it and all sorts, then you're going to want to make it look more detailed and stuff like that. But this is just to give you an example to show you how to do it. So let's just let's just get that out. And of course, um, so let's if we go into wireframe mode, what we're going to do is we're going to make these vertex these vertexes here, just the top row here, um, not be able to go through this. So this mesh here, so this polyplane here. These vertices won't be able to go through it. So as you can see, it'll be it'll like you can make it slide along it, etc. So if you can imagine, this is this this is this is going to be the road. This here is going to be the road for um, where the curtain can slide along. So obviously, if you want a curtain to be able to go really far, then obviously you want to do it like that. You know, if it's you know if it's not long enough, then obviously it's all going to like bunch up and stuff like that. So right now, the vertices won't be able to pass this point. Um, but for this example, this this will be fine. Um, so go come here, go into vertex mode. Actually, let's let's move this plane up a bit more. If we move that up just just below there, so just so there's not like a massive fall once you start the calculations. So if we go into back into vertex mode, then once you select all those vertices, then select um, the polyplane that we're going to apply the constraint to, and you want to go into end constraint, and you, there's something here called slide on surface. So then, if you click that, let's go back into this. And you'll see now that the mesh can't fall through it. See, it's stuck. But obviously, the, obviously, it's not moving and that. So um, now let's get it to move. So you can see, look, as you can see, look, it's still dynamic, but it's just not falling through. So it's holding it up quite good. Um, and like I said, it's it's up to you. So depending on how you want your curtain to move and that, you can you can alter it and stuff. So if you come go um go back to the end cloth and then come here then select all these vertices here. So then once you've done that, come up here, we're going to go back to the same end constraint and to click transform. And now you're going to get this little control thing here. And now we're going to come and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So let me just, oh, I'm going to select some of the other ones. I just want to select these ones here. Of course, depending on how you wanted the curtain to move. Um, well, in real life, if you think about it, um, the only things that will actually move is these top ones up here. But it, it literally depends on how you want the curtain to move. Um, this is just an example, so I'm going to show you how to, you know, make create a basic one, and then select transform again. So now we've got these two control points which can be manipulated. So um, now let's keyframe these. Let's move these. So frame one is going to be there, and let's get it to move up this direction at frame A. Obviously, if you do it, if you do it, if the they're too close together and that the curtain will be like all messed up and stuff because you know it'll be moving far too fast and that. So um, try to get the timing right. So, but of course, if you know you want like a tornado to hit a room or something, it will be moving really fast. So, um, so yeah, let's just key this one there, and so let's bring this up to frame eight as well and get it to move with it. And now, if we go to, if we go back to frame one, if we play, it should move along. So as you can see, it's a moving curtain, and that's how you get. And it can't, it won't fall through the railing, so it abides by that railing. And so if you had a scene and, you know, the curtain was moving along a railing, um, say, for example, if you had a stage and, you know, the curtains were going to open to show a performance, then this will be perfect for you because the curtains will move. So you could have a curtain on the other side as well, and both of them open up to reveal whatever's behind. Um, and, yeah, that's how you create um, a dynamic-based curtain railing.